Okay, so so that's Coco. Coco. Kids. I got Coco. I got Gravity. I got Batman Forever. Batman Forever. Cool. cool. And Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. It's uh, it's a my some of my favorites anyway. What have, what have you got behind you? What is that? Uh, this is a tenderloin. Uh, it's a feature film that I did, and that was the gift from the producer and director of of this film. It's a independent that I did one of my first things, uh, and won a bunch of uh, festivals, and some people took notice of it and were like, "Hey, we should probably put you in some other stuff." That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, wait, I was thinking I was already in Indiana Jones when I was like Junior. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just thinking about like that stuff. <laughs> Don't call it's the greatest know. movie because it's it like is. the sad sun dynamic. Anyways, uh, we need to talk about Sunrise. I keep doing this. I, I'm a horrible actor and producer because I don't talk about my own damn project. <laughs> I'm the worst, man. I'm the worst. Because I'm, I'm an actual fan. Like, I'm not like, you should watch it. I'm like, oh, let's talk about film. Like, yeah. film in general. Oh. Oh, this is going to be fun then, because I, absolutely, I want to. I I love talking about film, and and I, yeah. I'm looking forward to talking about Sunrise as well. Absolutely, thank um, you, thank you. It, it's so much fun, Kurt. It really is, and thank you for the t- the time to to chat about. It. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, what was it that excited you about this particular story? This, well, this one's you know one a great script, right? Like really yeah. fun, and then Andrew's work. He, he he shoots really artistic stuff. Like it's just beautifully shot. The cinematographer Ivan and uh, Carl have done a great job putting that together. Um, but when you see that kind of like through line of fear, but there's a thriller element to it and it has like a cool vibe. And then you're like, all right, I'm, I'm really interested in the project. Who's playing the lead, you know? And you're like, guy. And I'm like, ah, oh, I'm sold. You know, I mean, guy's work, right? Speaks for itself. Uh, I, 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 he, he should. I, I don't know why he's not doing giant, giant things. And the reason is, is because he's an artist, right? He's an art. He doesn't care about that. He, he wants to make enough money to be, but he doesn't want to go off and do these giant whatever films. Like they have to have some meaning. They have to have a theme. They have to be driven by characters who feel not real, but like there's a message inside it. Like this one is like fear destroys everything destroys good people it destroys bad people it destroys the people trying to do good it destroys the vengeful people it destroys everything so that that's a really strong message that i like was attracted to you know i'm glad you brought that up because this is one of the things that keeps coming up i you know spoken with alex and i've spoken with uh, uh spoken with andrew yeah. and fear is a key component of this particular film it really is. And I'm wondering from your perspective, what is it about fear that eats away at everything? Well, like, think about it this way. Like, have you ever had a problem in your life that you ignored? And the longer you ignored it, the bigger and scarier it got. But once you turned around and faced it, it wasn't as big and scary as you thought it was. So it's like the demon you dream up is way more deadly than the dr- demon you actually fight. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, if I give this up, who am I? If I change my life, I don't know what it will become. The fear of the unknown versus the thing you have. You know, people stay in relationships too long because of what they don't know. People don't change their jobs because of the job they don't know they might get. Like, there's so many things that are happening like that. And I think that's what it really boils down to. In a another film where it's like fear fear is like ah that's that's that kind of fear this is like characters fear and you see each character having fear and how that changes them that's why this is fear and then you have the thriller element and so it's like that that's what's really important from a from a messaging perspective because that's we all fear something and we probably fear 40 or 50 things but I think that's what the thing is about fear is it just, it's so destructive. And so, you know, the fear of others, you know, like the fear of it, the fear of that, the fear of what you don't understand. The, the, and then once you understand it, you're like, oh, that's the problem. You know, and then you're like, oh, well, let's have this solution. And then you learn it. 
But what the problem is, once you get past your own fear, you're now in this enlightened place. And you're like, no, guys, the water's clear. And you're very lonely once you get past fear. Because now no one understands what it's like to have gotten rid of fear. And you're like, no, it's fine. Like, come on in. It's cool. You know, and, and, and you're like, man, everyone's afraid. Like, and the only reason that's stopping them is fear. You have friends in your life, right? I hope that so. That are afraid of doing so. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. You're like, no, that's mean. Why'd you assume that? No, no, sorry. Um, but like, you have a buddy or two or a friend or whatever who could be something, whatever that something is, and they just aren't doing it. Maybe they're like a great like model builder. Maybe they're brilliant at darts or pool. Maybe they're a great writer or they come up with killer stories, but they've never put it down. Mm. You're like, why not? And they're like, well, you know, uh, that right there, that killed everything. That's just fear. Yeah. Well, you know what? With that, what? I mean, this is, this is a movie that it's, I mean, it's certainly about fear. And and taking yeah. the form like vampire movie, uh, but it's a vampire. Right. Movie. I, I think I said to to Andrew, I said this vampire movie for people that don't like vampire movies. Like it's it's pretty great and unique. I said we're not glittering. We're not glittering <laughs> no. vampires. <laughs> no, this is not Twilight. This is this is not at all. <laughs> la 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 la. la. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not knocking tight because if if Twilight Four came out, I would totally do it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that being said, you know, assuming Twilight Four is not in the books or five, oh, yeah. actually, um, five. Oh god. Yeah, because the third one was two parts, but uh, oh. I think there was one of those. I think anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What? Totally. totally yeah. yeah. What, what what does it take to make the monster in this film? Like, what is the monster to you? Is it just fear or is there something more? I think the monster is not looking at it. Because mm. think about the monster in this particular project. Where Where was it? It's like Jaws. How often did you see the shark? Yeah. It, it's the dun 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 what the what what was that i don't see anything but i think i heard it that's oh, that's that's it right like you know um that's that's the, the the thing about this you see all the characters and then there's this thing that's just like destroying everyone and sucking everyone down think about vampire and sucking the life out of everybody yeah. all you gotta do is have a few things to deal with it and it's dead but we invite fear into our lives like you have to invite a vampire into your home it can't just come in it's not allowed you have to invite that demon you have to say all right come in the second you let it in wreaks havoc and that's what this town did it just allowed it to fester that's why i think the vampiric like construct is so important is not only is it like sucking the life out of everybody and destroying things I think it's doing that from like, you see each of the characters, what they could have been if they just dealt with their things. Like my character would have gotten out of life and out of the thumb of Guy's character. He wouldn't have taken orders. He's bigger, he's stronger, clearly. Like when they stand toe to toe playing pool and he's yelling and throws, he's like, huh. but my character, just me too. Like my shoulders are twice the size of Guy's, right? Like you're like, you could beat him up, but I don't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm a scared little boy inside. You know, and, and, but you have to allow it to happen. You have to be from a vampiric perspective. You have to invite it into your life. It mm. just doesn't take root. You know, it's not, it's not an infection. It's something that you chose to do. Well, that's a great point. So, and, and a lot of this film too, talks about taps into the idea of the American dream. And you know, what you're talking about here is letting, letting things in that are going to eat eat away at it from the inside and this film really shows mm -hmm. that falling apart if you will and and especially for this family that's come over and you know them struggling to get them uh, get their feet on the ground if you will and get start to build something and they are people that are trying to hold them back yeah yeah uh, so i mean does that like 
does that in your mind does that still exist the american dream or is it something that is eating away at itself on the inside i mean i i think you know it's eating away at itself but it's because people don't understand what the root of the american dream is people think two cars is you know a garage and 2.5 kids right like that's the american dream you lost it the american dream that stuff was a result of the American dream. And the American dream is the melting pot idea that we all work together for a common good. And it's not what you do, it's how well you do it and, and the character you have inside of doing it. If you're the best damn janitor and you're a damn good person, that should be far more valuable than money, status, celebrityism, whatever that bullshit is. And that's like, if this town pulled together, they would win out all other things. They 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 would have had value from everybody. Everybody has problems. So you admit that and go, okay, I'll fix my problems if you're fixing yours while we're growing together. That's the American dream is seeing this idea of individualisms are the individuals are the most important thing, individual rights. Like that kind of a thing is the most important thing. And what you do with that, you have to be a good person, is that you give and help with that power. But the second you take and become like introverted, you've destroyed the system. Like it just breaks down. And that's that's the problem. And, you know, and that could be the problem. The government coming in saying, hey, we'll do the charity part for you. Well, now it's not charity. It's obligation. And people think, oh, charity is giving money. No, charity is the idea of humbling yourself and actually doing something amongst everybody else. Because when you do that, you get everything of value. Mm. You get the value, you get the knowledge, you get the experience, and then hopefully if you apply it, you have the wisdom. Without being able to do charity and the government doing it for you, you've lost the connection to the others. And then you're getting further and further others. And then you're like, I don't know why they're doing that. And you just, you're looking at them moving away from you, but you don't realize that you're moving away from them. So... Which is happening in this Look, film. You see that guy is pointing that finger. He's saying this is their all fault. All the time. Like, yeah, it, he's on the pulpit. He's doing this. And, you know, like, that's the thing. It's like, from your perspective, everyone else is wrong, but you've got three fingers pointing back at you, right? Like, you you have that, right? You, you, you never see that. You never think about the relativism of it all. Like, you go, they're moving away from me. And you're like, but I'm moving away from you, too. And if you don't think of that, and you're only doing it based out of fear, then you, you've you lost the plot, you know, not of the movie, but of yourself. Yeah. With that being said, you know, just as, uh, you know, as we're talking about this here, I'm like, we have this, this family that just wants to create a home for themselves in this new yeah. world. But the, wor but the people around them, especially Guy's character, leading them, pointing that finger. Mm -hmm. What do you think it means to, to open the doors and create a home? in a community like this yeah. for, for others. Yeah. I mean, I think that when you do it enough, you realize there's more value in doing it than not doing it, but there's also a value in retaining the valuable parts of what you are. So mm. if someone wants to destroy the valuable parts of what you are for them to take a position, you have to say no. But if they're not, and, you know, everyone's in that assimilation kind of a vibe. Like, I wouldn't go to, like, Brazil, right, and move to Brazil and fly American flags and be like, I'm American, ah, right? That's crazy. I'd be like, how do I assimilate? Let me eat some food. Let me go to the Brazilian dance. Let me learn, you know, some, like, I would want to, like, learn everything I can valuable. So I think there's a give and take of that process. And in this particular movie, I don't see that, guy is giving anything he's just a taker and a destroyer you know mm -hmm. like he's probably ultimately the, the 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 demon inside of the entire film right like you know ultimately but they're also you know the 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 husband who ended up do am i giving spoils away anyway <laughs> you can if you want sorry he <laughs> dies uh right like you know that starts that cycle of destruction and like instead of them like figuring out how to work together and what to do and build towards something. It's a lot easier to knock down the blocks than to build the blocks, right? Like how much easier is it to destroy things? Mm. It's really, really hard to not 
see the negative in something else and then just knock it away and dismiss it as it is. You know, like, let's just get into politics. You say the opposite of the political party, right? And just the idea that there's two, it's like silly. But you're like, unless you're in Canada, are you in Canada? I'm in Canada. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I got the accent. So, you know, <laughs> sorry, my wife's Canadian. Uh, um, but like, you know, like, you know, you have a, a two or three to four parties up there, you know, depending on which one gets in and, and that local election, which builds up. Anyways, it's an yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, you know, it's always like they're demons, they're demons, they're demons in America, right? They're demons, they're demons. And you're like, maybe you're both demons sometimes. And maybe you're both right sometimes. Hmm. Maybe, maybe you have value to each argument. Maybe each argument has a terminus where if you get too deep into that mm, theology or ideology, it breaks down because it's too far away from a, you know, center. Like you, if you have no wind outside, it's stagnation. Mm -hmm. That's bad. If you have too much wind, it's a tornado. That's bad. You need a little wind sometimes and not, and some, and right. You, so you need to like, but you can't be like right now in political theory or even in this movie, you have like no wind always or tornadoes only. And you're like, what? No, neither of those. This is horrible. It's like that like thing as I see it, like, like guy is like, no one ever knew we'll rebuild this town. And it's like, the town is falling apart. You need new blood. And the new blood's like, we don't want to be a part of this town. Just give us our little area. There you go. Now you have an impasse. Wow. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. Uh, uh, honestly, uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, this is, uh, Kurt, this, the film's so much fun. Yeah. Um, Isn't it just, beautiful, too? Like, Andrew shot it beautifully. It is. It, it's it's absolutely beautifully shot. And uh, the use of color, everything, sort of, no, no pun intended, but it's bleeding into one another, which yeah. goes yeah. back to the theme, I know. But it's it's beautifully shot. And... Um, what, what do you hope people take away uh, from from Sunrise? Yeah, I mean, I, first, I want them to enjoy it. And it has like a thriller element. So it's like, you know, has beats. It, 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 it's propulsive. But it's beautiful to watch. Like, you can sit in it. I, I think, you know, ultimately, I want to take away that, you know, if you if you let fear win, it, it destroys everything. But mm. face your fears. Like, all it would take is my character, D, to knock out guy's character that's it one time and this one movie would be right <laughs> all it would yeah one punch all it would have taken is alex's character a long time ago to do something different the dad not being an idiot and going into that like it's you know, all the thing you know and like even even the fighting of the two boys mm. like all it takes is the one other person saying no or changing or or facing their own fear even like the 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 mother character being like don't do that son <laughs> like but she's like chosen the darkness so i think face your own fears you know and then also know that like it's not it's not easy but once you turn around it's less scary it's less hard than you think it is that's what I, that's how I, that's how i read it you know and that's what was interesting about the character especially d like d you know like he is a powerful looking person on camera. Like he's big and he's sheriff and he can handle it, but he's letting Guy's character dictate who he is. If he just took control, which he can't, he believes he can't do, you know? I mean, look what he's talking to like the grandmother's character. Like he's like, what, what, what was the, what was that word? Uh, you know, that's, he's a little boy. He's just a little scared boy. That's, I think that we all are. And if you, Face it, hopefully your town won't explode. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a worst case scenario. But yeah, uh, yeah. that's worst case scenario. Probably. Yeah, yeah. But you know. I really appreciate the chance to chat with you, Kurt. I really do. Um great, the, great. a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And uh, I wish you the best. Thank you very much. Well, hit me up on Instagram or whatever, stay in contact. You I know, will. like shout out my stuff because I'm like as you see, easy going, whatever. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, it's all good. <laughs> well, we could just talk movies too. We just talk about. If, uh, yeah, you know, man. What's your, okay? Real quick, what's your favorite movie all time? You can only choose one. You're on a desert island. 
You only get one movie. Okay. So yeah, not favorite movie. You're on a desert island. You somehow or another you have power, but you only have one TV and a DVD flare. I gotta (laughs) bring you one. I got one one disc for my DVD. I got a DVD of a desert island. So one film. You can't you can't have like Game of Thrones. That's like multiple seasons. Like one film. We're just talking film. One film. Oh man. Um Okay, it depends if I'm if I'm not going for fun. If I'm going for quality, I'm going with Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane. Going with Citizen Kane. Or maybe The Godfather. Godfather. Michael. Yeah. What about you? What about I you? Liked my favorite film, you know, is uh it's Godfather. That was bad Marlon Brando. Um <laughs> for me I'd have to go with Lawrence of Arabia. Oh wow, okay. I a big big fan of David Lean. Um, and you know, probably, uh, Peter O'Toole's performance in that is just, it's incredible. Like I could just, you know, watch that. I've seen, I've seen that on a, a big screen too, 80 millimeter or 70 millimeter. And you see the grains of sand blowing in the wind that you don't see on your TV. It's just, I don't know. It's not the perfect movie cause it's long and slow. No, I hear you. But hear you. it's just, I feel like it's probably me. It's a little like me, like, you know, a complicated character that wants everything for everyone. But in the end, that destroys things, too. You got to choose your path, choose your allies. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, this you're is insane. Great too, man. You're, Have you seen you're... RKO? RKO yes. one? 281. Yes, right? 281. Yeah, yes. I, that's fantastic. I love that one. Oh, that's but I've never seen Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, Never seen it. I know Long. it's a classic. I've never seen it. But. Think about like reading War and Peace. Like you had to sit down for it. <laughs> like you put down your snacks and you're like, I'm going to sit here for three hours when I'm in a con- con- contemplative mood. So very cool. I keep talking film all day long. <laughs> I could too, but we got to, I got to let you go. I know you're, you're busy, yeah. but thanks so much, Kurt. I really appreciate it. This is great. Yeah, brother. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.